In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make a C Sharp program uh, do repetitive tasks. It's called looping, uh, otherwise known as repeating. Um, there are several constructs for loops. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is called the while loop. That's while, W H I L E. And the way a while loop works is it's going to repeat whatever is in this curly bracket while this statement is true. So if I say while true, um, is going to repeatedly execute whatever command we put here. Um, and now this is a very, very dangerous thing because you're going to eventually want that condition to turn false because you're not going to want it to just sit there and loop endlessly all day every day unless you just have the worst of intentions for the computer that you're running this on. So this will actually run your processor into the ground until it either melts or runs out of memory. Bad things happen when you do this so do not do it. So that being said I'm going to do it. We'll say console right line don't do this. Okay. And we can just get rid of this. Also, watch what happens. Boom. And it's just going to sit there and just do that endlessly. Um, even more dangerous is if you're. Uh, adding variables. So if we come up with a string variable, oops, I'm in all caps there. So we'll say string x equals empty string. Now for those of you with no programming background, the statement you're about to see is going to be a little mind-bending. Um, so because it, it's going to look like an algebra um, equation uh, but a very, very wrong equation. So if we say x equals x plus, ah, I forgot my plus. Now in algebra, this part right here, you could never have this. So like uh, in algebra, I guess to make this look better, in algebra, you cannot have an equation that looks like this. It's not true because it simplifies. You would subtract x from both sides, and this whole equation would simplify down to 0 equals 1. And that is, uh, uh, well, it's not an equation because 0 doesn't equal 1. Um, however, this is perfectly legal in programming, and here's why. Because the equals symbol has a completely different meaning in programming than it does in algebra. What this equal sign does is it says, hey, whatever expression is over here on the right, I'm going to evaluate all of that first and then at the very end assign that to what's over here on the left. So this is actually an action, if you will. It's not an expression of equality. If you're looking for equality in C sharp, that is the double equals and that becomes a Boolean statement. So then if you were to actually have zero double equals 1. This right here is a Boolean statement and it equals false. Meditate on that. So, but back to the loops. What we're going to do is we're going to concatenate this string repeatedly and then we're going to print it to the console. And as you can imagine, this is going to get very nasty very quick. Oh, oh yes. Told you it got nasty. Okay. So now, ah. Now, if we were to just let that run over and over, X is going to get phenomenally huge very quick. And eventually, you're going to run your machine out of memory. So don't do this. Now more realistically, a while loop, you're going to want to do things a certain number of times until a condition is false. So rather than just having this run blindly, we'll just say while x.length is less than, we'll say, a thousand. Okay. So what this is going to do is as long as x is less than a thousand characters long, it's going to loop. And then eventually, 
uh, once x is greater than a thousand it's going to exit the loop and then keep processing so come down here we'll say the loop is finished loop is finished And then, I guess to go back to our format statements, we'll say console write line. Let's put a formatted string in there. We'll say x, x's length is, okay. And now here's another little trick here because x is a string but the length is an integer and format only deals with uh, strings so length is an integer format is strings how are we going to put an integer into strings we'll say to string new lesson for the day so now we'll run so it ran up until it was a thousand characters long, and then it says loop is finished. X's length is 1000. So that's the while loop. Um, another trick you can do is if you're doing it with numbers, you can increment based on a number. So um, let's say you want it, rather than evaluating uh, x on its length, let's say you just want this to run 100 times. So what you would do then is now you're no longer concerned with x's length. You just want this to execute 100 times and quit. So we'll have an integer called count equals 1. So now the first time it executes, we'll say while well, count it's less than or equal to 100. It's going to do the, it's going to print ah. Uh, and then we need to increment count so that every time the loop executes count becomes 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, all the way up until 100. And there's two ways to do that. Number one is with our awesome algebra statement where you say count equals count plus 1. The way this works is it says, okay, count equals 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, then count, count becomes 2, the loop repeats. As a matter of fact, I'm going to break this down so you can see it in action. Now, there's more than one way to make this happen. This is the first method, uh, is this statement here. So if you look, if we look at count, count is 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a watch down here. So we're going to watch count as this executes. So this shows us the value of count. Bring this up a little bit. So now <clears throat> we're going to go into the loop. We add ah. As a matter of fact, why don't we just watch x2. All right. So now x equals ah. We write that to the console, and now watch count. Count goes up to 2. We are going to do this again. And now the count is 2, so it's going to say 2 plus 1 is 3, and save that back to count. And keep in mind, remember, because we're not actually doing algebra, variables in programs are placeholders. They're not like numerical variables like you would think of in in algebra. So once again we add ah and now we come up here and we evaluate count is 3 so 3 plus 1 is 4 so it's going to take 4 and then assign that back to count. Count becomes 4. You can see ah, the string gets longer one piece at a time and count is now 6. Now count is 7. And so this is how you make a loop execute a specific number of times all the way up until the point where it gets to the hundredth. Now here's a trick that you can do in any integrated environment. So now we're going to say count equals 100. So we're going to fast forward. So I've changed the value of count now. So that the value of count is 100. This is still going to be true because it says less than or equal to 100. So it's going to say that 100 is equal to 100. So this is our last concatenation. We write that to the console. 
and now this becomes 101. Now this is where the statement becomes false because now count is greater than 100. So count is no longer less than 100. It's going to exit the loop and our execution is finished. So that's the while loop. We'll look at uh, another loop uh, in the next video.